Hello, and welcome back to another great episode of the Grateful Redhead Podcast. I'm Angie Ringler, your host, and today I am joined by somebody who my natural curiosity had to reach out to. So if you've listened to any of my shows in the past, you know that I love storytelling. I think it's a really great way for us to not only share our experiences, but to have them more memorable. And I prefer, obviously, storytelling a song. I'm all about music, and I find that it's amazing how many lyrics I can remember through the course of my life. And I've said it more than once. I think all school should be taught in the form of a song. We would probably remember our lessons a heck of a lot easier. So I ask Megan to be on the show today because when I saw her title, it piqued my interest so well that I'm going to have let her share what it is that she does. But the title I saw said Vulnerable Storytelling. And I think today we are going to hear a really kind of fresh perspective on what that means and how we can all kind of benefit from vulnerable storytelling. So Megan, if you take a few minutes and just introduce yourself and share with me how you got to this point and you know what in your life brought you to be really interested in storytelling and wanted to share it with others. Yeah, I mean, um, thank you. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this conversation. I'm glad we we're able to connect. Yes. And I love talking about storytelling. So um, it's, it's, my big, 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 big passion in life. And I've just really discovered it in the last four or five years and how much I love it. And it really came to be because in 2004, I was a college student at Mississippi State University. And I um, came out as gay and I had a really tumultuous coming out experience. And it left me feeling very defeated by life and very defeated by um, just, just really hurt by the people that I thought loved me unconditionally. And so I left Mississippi for a long time and I was really looking for a way to love myself and I wanted to find a sense of worthiness again. And so I just kind of went on this journey. Um, I lived in Florida for a while in Miami and Tallahassee, got another graduate degree at Florida State University. And then I ended up in Colorado and I just was like in bad relationship after bad relationship. And I, I hit my rock bottom at some point. And I remember at some point I just screamed at the universe one day, like, I just want to be loved the way that I love. And it was like this desperate calling, this, this inner need for myself. And it wasn't about just finding a partner. It was about just really loving myself. I was so desperate to feel whole. And that's what I wanted. And this was in 2008. And um, a few weeks later, I met my, who would soon be my wife many years later. But we decided after meeting and dating for a while that we would move back to Mississippi. And the reason I decided to do that was because I felt like I needed to heal on many different levels. And I couldn't do it without coming back here. Um, And we're still here 12 years later. Um, but it was just a necessary step in my journey that I needed to take to feel really good about who I am and to get to that wholeness that I was really desiring. And so she really encouraged me, well, let's go. She had never been to the South before <laughs> and uh, she grew up all around the world and she she just was fully supportive of what I needed to do for myself. And so we immersed ourselves here and we, we came here with $100 in our pocket and created a path for ourselves and a lot of my journey has been about sharing my stories here in Mississippi. And so I've come to love storytelling in the impact that it has on, that it's had on my, myself and the impact it's had on our community and the impact it's had in creating deeper relationships with people. And I've just seen it work so magically over the years. And it, it hasn't been an easy journey by any means. I've had to, you know, like brace myself for being authentic all the time and being real. But every time I've done that, it's, it's been very rewarding in the connections that we've been able to make and the friendships and um, just all of the healing that's happened for myself internally and within my family and just with this community in general from feeling completely rejected by 
to now feeling very much a part of it. Um, storytelling has been the, the one go-to for me over the years, and that's why I love it so much, and that's why I've made the last uh, many years about that being my my kind of like my my focus on my career and my work. Now, just a minute ago, you said you've seen it work. What, give us an example of that. Well, when I came back to Mississippi, um, I was being asked all the time to come and be on the news and be on radio shows and speak on stage at Mississippi State University and um, be involved in petitioning the, the local uh, city government for changes in equality. And so I've just kind of been asked to, like Baptist preachers and Catholic priests would come and talk to me behind closed doors. I've just kind of been that person that people have come to because I've been very open about myself and my experiences. And, um, and so when I've done these things or these talks and been involved in these conversations, I've just been very honest on how I've felt and what has impacted me and what has hurt me. And it just opens the door for the other person or audience or people to, you know, say, okay, I hear what she's been through. And I get that. She's not blaming me for having that perspective. She's saying this is how it feels to be treated a certain way. And it has just opened the door to conversations rather than like just pointing the finger and saying you're wrong and I'm right or I'm right and you're wrong. And, you know, it just, it's been a bridge as far as just healing for myself because I've been able to be authentic and real and then healing for the people in my community because we've been able to bridge that gap and, and come to some sort of understanding where we can, where we can now conversate as human beings rather than our labels. So it sounds like it's more of like sharing your experience to let others probably know that, Hey, you're, you're not alone. You know, what you're feeling is maybe something I went through, but instead of telling people where they're wrong, right. It, it provides this uh, ability to have this open forum discussion, like you just mentioned is there some format that you're using, like when you go and speak in front of these groups or, um, you know, at a church or an organization that you put your story into, or are you just free flowing from your heart? Originally it was free flowing and it was just from my heart. And over the years I've, I've looked into a lot of storytelling theories and formulas and I've studied those and I've worked with a lot of speakers, professional speakers. I've been in a lot of speaker training and um, I've studied just storytelling in general. And so I've, I've actually just kind of come up with my own method and my own formula that I use now when I'm teaching and when I am writing my own stories or, you know, I'm writing a new book right now, so I'm using it for that. So I've developed a theory of my own um, that involves a component of authenticity and vulnerability um, that is basically like the main part of what's important of, sh of sharing and, and deep connection with other people. So, so I've created that, um, just in the last year or so. Were you finding that when you were taking these other classes and, you know, learning from speakers and speaker training about storytelling, were you, were you finding that they were leaving the vulnerability out? It wasn't at the forefront and I make it at the forefront. I think it's, you know, depending on like who you were learning from, vulnerability was a part of it, especially in movie writing or in screenplays, that kind of writing. Um, there's, there's a lot of theories that really point there has to be a vulnerable character and there needs to be a hero. And in my theory, it's, it's different. Um, there has to be vulnerability, but it needs to come from you personally. And so I really specialize in helping people tell their personal stories, their memoir stories. Okay. And so a lot of people really forget to put that aspect in it, their emotions and their feelings. And, you know, the things that are really real about the experience or conflict or challenge they might be going through. And we do that because we're afraid of, you know, being misunderstood or not being seen or, you know, not, um, yeah. I guess it's just that fear of not being accepted. So we, we tend to glaze over that and people naturally glaze over that vulnerable piece that makes a story so impactful. And, and I get it. I mean, it was always scary for me to share my stories and it still is. Yeah. Cause I think vulnerability, just the word itself, it's like, Ooh, I'm going to open myself up maybe to a place I'm not real comfortable. You know, I don't know. 
you know, and now with what, you know, cancel culture, right? It's almost like the more you put yourself out there and you're being honest and authentic about your feelings, your beliefs, your understandings, then it's, it's like we're opening ourselves up to attack. And it's some days it's like, I can't take any more negative, you know, we don't have to look very far these days to see and get that negative information. So um, I, I think that's why I was so attracted by that kind of title when I saw you it was like vulnerable storytelling. I've taken a few classes, you know, to be a better speaker and, you know, kind of get my point across better to where people would understand. And it comes in all formats of classes or, um, you know, online learning or reading books. And I have found that the one thread that I picked up was that they're like, you know, you can use other people's stories and you just kind of craft it to how you can relate to the story. But, and I get that because a lot of times we feel like what's happening in our own life maybe isn't that special or that impactful or who really cares about what I did or what's going on in my life. So I feel like they just teach you to, okay, grab onto this outside story that, you know, maybe you heard or somebody else experienced and kind of um, mold it to be your own in a way. But how can we bring that real passion behind it or that vulnerability into that story when we haven't truly experienced it or been there? So I find it very interesting what you're doing. Um, tell me a little bit about the book that you're writing right now. Well, it's, um, I've written two other books that have been published. So this is my third. Congratulations. That is not an easy feat. (laughs) Thank you. It has been, uh, ever since I was little, I wanted to be a speaker and writer. And so, you know, it's just, just has been my journey and path. Um, but this one is a really in-depth memoir. And so I'm highlighting the, um, the storytelling aspect but I'm doing it with my own story. Um, so it's been very challenging to write because my editors are like poking me to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but I really appreciate that because it's showing me how much more there is in there. And so sometimes I have to just like pause and be like, okay, I need to take a break. This is too emotional. (laughs) And then I have to come back later, but I've really enjoyed the process of it. And uh, my hope is, my next book will be about my storytelling method and then integrating other people's stories within that method. So, you know, I'm, I'm working my way kind of down the line, I'm starting with my own, just in this storytelling space. And then I'm going to move forward with other books around storytelling and how to do it effectively. That's really great. You know, and, and there's that saying, I'm probably going to get it wrong, but it's like, you know, you keep laying the steps in front of you one by one, and eventually you have a ladder to where you wanted to go. And it sounds like that's what you're doing to be able to, I mean, you wouldn't even be here with this story today had you have not been through all the crap before, you know, all the stuff that when you're in the midst of it, we don't understand why life is being so rough or why it's so hard or why am I hated or unloved or whatever those moments that were causing that hole, we don't realize why they're happening. And a lot of times it does take us getting on the other side, getting, putting a little bit of time between us and that moment and saying, wow, you know, look what I learned. Look at the strength that I evolved out of that. And um, so I think, I think your book sounds like it's really going to be interesting in the fact that what you're going to come out with on the other side, we as the reader won't even be able to experience half of that because it's going to be such an internal growth for you. It's going to be, I feel like a really exciting time when you're able to put those thoughts out on paper and, and really kind of take that growth in and enjoy it. Yeah. Exciting and scary. (laughs) Exciting and scary. Yes. Good balance. Good balance is right. Um, What were your first two books about? Uh, the first one was is called uh, Creating Your Heaven on Earth, and I wrote that in 2008, and uh, it was traditionally published by a small independent press. It's my first book. I was 27 years old, and I feel like I got really lucky to get published quickly. And then the next one, I wrote a few books in between that I just never published, and then the next one I published, I self-published in 2014, and that one um, is called Courage, Agreeing to Disagree is Not Enough, because I'm just this 
constant conversation of people agreeing to disagree, but not diving deeper into connection and trying to actually have real conversations. So it's really about that. And so now this one is like all of those experiences in one and just, you know, like what you said, just looking back and realizing that this place in my life where I'm really happy and I feel, you know, this fullness and this wholeness that I've, that I haven't felt before. And, and I can look back now and, and come with that confidence and that reflection and, and a better understanding of what the journey has really been about for me. So um, it's, uh, yeah, that's it's definitely that, an experience. when you said the title of that second book, I felt like that could be written today and would apply <laughs> to everything that's going everything on today. Right? <laughs> I'm thinking a slight rewrite of the book and you'd be able to put something out that totally applies to, you know, our environment today. We are doing a lot of, let's just agree to disagree so we can move forward and we're never diving in. And maybe it's because we have so much shit going on that we can't figure out how to make the bandwidth to dig a little bit deeper. I agree. I agree. I've heard that from so many people that, and maybe you've heard the same thing too, is just people are just short on bandwidth right now. Like we're just tired. And, and I've definitely seen that. So you've come a long way and you definitely sound like you're in a really great place considering the small tidbit that you shared earlier, you know, of finding these, you know, negative aspects in your life there. Are there any tips that you could share with us that, you know, you think were, were strong points that allowed you to either hold yourself up higher to move on or that you, you know, you recall really working for your benefit that, that you think we also could adapt when we hit those hard moments. Gosh, just having those hard conversations that you're really scared to have. I think that's been the biggest thing for me and the most healing point. And, um, you know, I've had some hard conversations with my mom over the years and my parents and family members and, um, you know, it's just that the ability to to go forward with with the conversation, even when you're just really scared to be authentic and honest about your feelings. And those have been the most freeing aspects of my journey, but no doubt, hands down. Um, so I think I think that's the biggest thing is we're so scared to have those hard conversations because we don't want to put our real feelings out there and really share like the truth of, you know, how we've been hurt or how, you know, just how things played out in our minds and from our perspective that we really miss out on opportunities to grow a stronger connection with the other person. Um, And I've been very fortunate to have parents and friends and family members who have been willing to have those conversations with me and look at themselves and, And so I don't know. I I think that's the biggest thing is just diving into those when they're still really scary to have has been a big, big thing for me. Yeah. And, you know, I know you're talking from a very personal perspective of, you know, having these conversations of how you're personally hurt. And I think when we look at the larger picture of what's going on on our planet right now, these are also hard conversations for any of us to have that, our actions or inactions are having this tremendous effect on the planet, on the earth that we live on. And that if we don't do something drastic, our life is not going to look like it does today. And that's scary to say. And, you know, look, I'm, I'm over 50. I won't be here at least you know, in, in my mind, I won't be here when the world is on fire, so to speak. And I don't even really like that term, but that's kind of like what the terminology we're using now. And I think what, what do 15 year olds think today? What does a 20 year old think that when they turn on the news or they read something that says in 20 years, you know, um, Florida could be under, you know, water, you know, the coastline could be underwater or that we won't have such clean air or that, People will have migrated, you know, millions of people will have migrated out of their area because of, you know, food deserts and lack of clean water, more issues with lack of clean water. I, I want, it's a hard conversation to have because I'm the kind of person who I want to stay positive. I want to put a smile on every day. I want days to be great. And and I want to sometimes, you know, that fake it till you make it attitude, right? Like I'll just put a smile on and go about my day, but 
that's ignoring those hard, heavy conversations that I don't know how to have most of the time. And I certainly don't know how to have them with a 15 year old or with a 20 year old or anybody younger than me, because quite honestly, what is it going to look like 20 years from now? And, and how do they deal with that now? Yeah, that's a really good point too. I mean, it is heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's really <laughs> heavy. <laughs> not ex- not where I expected our conversation to go, but these are like, it, I feel like it's, you know, it, these are the heavy things and how do we kind of pull ourselves up by the bootstrap and say, okay, let's make time today to have a crappy conversation, right? Let's make time today to maybe cry or be sad or be angry or mad or whatever the emotions are, but they're not going to be joyful and they're not going to be hopeful and optimistic and all of these things that we're struggling with right now that, uh, it's an interesting movement forward that we have. So I guess that's when, let me, let me ask you, when you said, you, you know, like you had some hard conversations with your mom, I, I am assuming that whatever the topic was, and it doesn't even really matter exactly what the topic is, but whatever it was that you wanted to have with your mom that was difficult, you probably had the chance to roll it over a little bit in your mind before you addressed it with her, right? But she is might be hearing that for the very first time and hasn't had that chance to have that time frame to deal with it like you had. Can you share a little bit about what that was like and and were there, was there any strategy that you were able to open up with her to allow her to kind of meet you where you are or you meet her where she was at the time? Yeah, um, we actually, and I'm putting this in the book, um, we, I was having, so when, when I came out to her, it was, it was a painful experience for both of us because it shook my world and it shook her world. And it was unexpected for her, and I had already been mulling it over for a year. And so I came into that conversation um, fragile and scared out of my mind. And um, so it created a memory for me and a feeling for me of just exposure and raw and just uncertainty of how she was really feeling because she was crying and she seemed disappointed. And, you know, I had my own perspective on what she was thinking and feeling. And so many years later, I was still really struggling with our interaction from that day. And I said, mom, I'm really struggling from our interaction from that day. You know, I was thinking maybe we could write letters to each other and go back to that moment and go through our thoughts and feelings. And I'll tell you mine and you tell me yours. And we'll just both write it down because we both like to process things and we'll exchange and then we can have a conversation about it. And so that's what we did. I wrote a letter to her and I said, you know, this is when you acted, when you were crying, I felt like I had disappointed you. And I was really afraid that I, um, you just made you really sad. And I realized I wasn't, you know, the daughter that you thought you were going to have, and I wasn't going to have the life you thought I was going to have. And it was really hard for me. And so I just went into depth in my feelings and emotions. And when she wrote her letter back to me, her letter was about her fear for me and that she was just really scared for the life, the challenges I was going to go through. And she was reacting from a place of fear. And I took that as she was reacting from a place of disappointment. And those are two very spaces, two very different spaces to be in. And so until we took the time to write those letters and be honest and have the follow-up conversation, I don't, there, we were already making movement, but that was very healing for, for me. And it gave me so much perspective that when we go into these hard conversations, we already have our stuff coming with us. And other people have their stuff coming with them. And we, if we bring it and we, you know, don't give us a, give ourselves space and a chance to really like, you know, fester over it and, and really take it in, then, I mean, no wonder we miscommunicate (laughs) and we see things, you know, so that's just, that's a really good example of diving in for sure. And that was scary to do. That was perfect, Megan. Really, that I think is such a powerful tip that 
How do we, because sometimes we don't even know what we're feeling at the time when we get this like overwhelming information or we have this sharing moment with somebody that we didn't expect the conversation to go that way, that it gives us that kind of time to process and put down onto paper and then share our true feelings or questions and concerns. You know, it's always like, um, you know, when you have a conversation with somebody and you hang up and you're like, oh man, I should have told them that. Or why didn't I say that in that conversation? And, you know, I think it gives us that time to really do that in the letter, in the letter writing. So thank you so much for sharing that. I, I knew that this would be a wonderful conversation and you would be able to, you know, enlighten a little bit about what it is and why it's important to have these vulnerable conversations. So, um, Tell people where they can find you and, you know, if they're interested, are your, if your previous books are still in print, where they are able to get those and maybe some information if you have to share about your uh, third book that's coming out, when that might be happening and where we can get some more information about that. Um, so my first two books are on my website, www.meganonan.com, M-E-A-G-A-N-O-N-A-N at dot com. And then my new book, the pre-sale launch is coming up March 23rd of this month. And so I'll be doing that for about a month for 30 days. And then the actual release will be in September. So I'll be um, out promoting for the next however many months that is. So (laughs) um, just, you know, gearing it up and going through revisions and, you know, choosing book covers and doing all the editing and all the fun stuff that goes with it. So I'll be, I'll be swamped in, in all of that these next five or six months, but I'm really excited about this project. So excited for you as well. I know writing a book is not easy. I wrote one myself. It's only an ebook form, but those hundred pages were probably one of the biggest tasks I've taken (laughs) on. And but I, I think that it, it's always an enjoyable journey when you're sharing something about your life personally or experiences, which is what I did in my Going Plastic Free Room by Room cool. book. And here you I are sharing your book. book. What's that? I need your book. All right. You can get a, down, a free download of it at wastefreepledge.com. <laughs> a little oh, plug okay, for cool. myself right there. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. send you some of my ebooks as well. That would be great. And um, this will probably come out um, after your book launch because it's, you know, it's going to happen. Your book launch is at the end of this of month. Um, but if yeah. you'll share with us some information that we can put out on our social media, at least it'll be timely um, because probably by the time that we do put out a, a new podcast every week. So by the time this comes out, I think your book will actually be available and ready for everybody to order. So that'll be really cool. Awesome. Cool. Good timing. Nice. Well, Megan, thank you so much for taking time today to join me on my show. I am really thankful for what you've shared today. I think it's really um, important that we all continue to have more conversations, that we don't do everything through text and email, that we actually, you know, have face to face conversations and listen to each other's, you know, stories of the things we've experienced along the way. We have the ability to grow from all those amazing experiences. So I hope that uh, everyone has enjoyed listening to myself and Megan today have a really nice conversation. If you know somebody cool like Megan, please reach out to me and, and connect me with them. I would love to get the chance to invite them on my show as well. So until we all meet again, please be kind to each other and love one another. Peace out.